Hello everyone. From the first City of Ottawa video, we had so much footage left over that I decided to make another walkabout style video. We started our day walking through the Parliament Hill area on our way over to a cathedral that we wanted to see. We got up fairly early because we knew it was going to be a long day and the tourists were already starting to gather around Parliament Hill. A beautiful view of Wellington Street and a statue of Mackenzie King, one of our Prime Ministers of Canada's past. A unique item found along our walk. This shot shows the National Gallery of Canada on the left and the Notre Dame Cathedral on the right. We were on the way to the cathedral, but we got distracted by this guy for a minute. Located outside the gallery, it's a 30 foot high sculpture named Maman which is a French word for mother. Created by Louise Bourgeois, it alludes to the strength of her own mother. This church is named the Notre Dame Cathedral Basilica and it was designated a National Historic Site in 1990. It is the oldest and largest church in Ottawa and construction was completed in 1846. We noticed that the exterior was fairly reserved, but inside it was surprising in its ornate design with its carved features and stained glass windows. I've been to Montreal's Notre Dame Basilica as well, and I'm not sure which is more beautiful of these two churches. They both have their charms. The church is also known for its hundreds of statues of religious figures. Created by Louis Philippe Hébert, there are many wooden statues in this choir area alone. And unfortunately, the video does not give justice to the beauty of this space. For all the times that I've been in Ottawa, this is the first time I've ever seen this cathedral, and I was very glad to have come and seen it. We were on our way to Rideau Hall, but took this quick shot of the Prime Minister's entrance to his normal residence at 24 Sussex. Who is entering is anybody's guess, but I believe renovations are currently taking place. Currently, the Prime Minister is not residing at 24 Sussex due to much needed work that's required on the main residence. This building, I believe, is called the Coach House, which is within the estate. And this is a statue of Queen Elizabeth II. It was unveiled as part of Canada's 125th anniversary back in 1992. We found our way to Rideau Hall, which is the residence of the Governor General of Canada. At the entrance, they had this display of the grounds. The arrow indicates the main residence. We had booked a tour inside Rideau Hall, but had a short time to walk around the grounds. Given that Ottawa is the national capital and the seat of our government, I couldn't help but wonder if this was an inside joke. I'll let you decide. I should mention that taking video inside the residence was forbidden, so unfortunately all we were able to take was photos. The tour starts at the main entrance with its many paintings of past governor generals, including Vincent Massey, who is the first Canadian-born governor general. This official portrait is of Jules Laguerre and is the first painting to include his wife, the vice regal council. While Governor General, Laguerre had suffered a stroke and his wife, Gabrielle, assisted him on many occasions. This is the tent room created by the Earl of Dufferin to host indoor parties like the outdoor ones you would find in England. 
I guess you could say that we were lucky on the day of our visit as the Governor General was away, so we were able to see some of the more private areas of the residence. And to complete the tour, the ballroom, which holds many state functions. On our way back, we found this sculpture on Green Island. It depicts Lieutenant Colonel John McRae as he writes in Flanders Fields during World War I at the Battle of Ypres. The poem in Flanders Fields is extremely well known in Canada and is taught to all Canadian school children. Unfortunately, McRae died during the War of Pneumonia at 45 years old. Walking back, we also found this monument in Confederation Park. It's two war memorials, one to the fallen of the Boer War, and the other commemorates all animals used in service by the Canadian military. At Spark Street, we were getting hungry, so we decided it was time to eat. And we decided to get a little adventurous. After that, we wandered over to an area of the Ottawa River we had not been to before. It included several old buildings like this hydroelectric generating station, as well as Bronson Channel, which the geese are definitely in favor of. We finally made our way to view the Chaudier Falls. At the time we were there, we seen very few people, so it's certainly off the usual tourist route. Not sure what these buildings were, but could have been old hydroelectric station or a building that was part of the large lumber business back a hundred years ago. But whatever they were, somebody had made sure they will remain as they are now. Unfortunately, there was a lot of construction in the area, so the sounds of the water does not always get uninterrupted. I also wondered too that if the dam structures had not been there, this probably would have been all covered by water. The water is certainly beautiful to see, but I have to say that the area is a bit over industrialized for me. We got back to our hotel just in time. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for coming over.